It is the 433rd year of the First Era, and Uriel VII of the Septim dynasty has been slain. Hellish portals to oblivion open across the land, and from them pour forth the dread legions of Marunis Dagon. Throughout all of Tamriel, the Dramora hordes of the Daedric Prince of Destruction set the countryside alight, save for one corner of the continent. In the foggy, fetid, swampy bowels of Tamriel's southeastern jungles, the gates of oblivion opened not upon a fertile land ripe for ravaging, but upon an army of lizard folk, cold-blooded yet burning hot with wrath. Guided by the all-knowing roots of the Hist, the Saxliel had been made ready to face the invaders. Rather than letting the Daedra defile their swamp, they charged right into those portals to hell with such ferocity that the demonic invaders were made into the invaded and forced to close the Oblivion Gates to avoid being overrun. In this latest video on our survey of the races of Tamriel, we will explore the history, society and culture of the Argonians, the mysterious and fearsome lizard folk of the bayous of Black Marsh. The Argonians, known in their own tongue as the Saxlil or People of the Root, are the mysterious lizard folk of Tamriel, possessing the humanoid shape of men and myrrh, but the scaled exterior of reptiles. They are native to the deep southeastern province of Black Marsh, a balmy land of endless jungle choking with impenetrable poisonous plant life and teeming with deadly predators. Throughout the second and third eras, the hinterlands of Black Marsh were one of the only pockets of Tamriel largely untouched by Cyrodiilic imperialism. While the all-conquering legions of Tiber Septim established a colonial presence on the province's borderlands and coasts, they dared not traverse the inaccessible interior. Throughout all of history, the deep core of Black Marsh has remained a place where men and elves fear to tread. A breeding ground for disease, where one can easily sink into the bog and never be seen again. If they were not first eaten by some prehistoric beast, or speared by the hostile native lizard people who stalk silently through the jungle as its deadliest apex predators. Indeed, the Argonians are perfectly adapted to their homeland, possessing a unique physiology which allows them to thrive in an environment that most dry-skinned warm-bloods would consider uninhabitable. Forked of tongue and moist of scale, the Argonians possess a natural immunity to all poison and diseases, allowing them to withstand the toxic plant life and venomous fauna of the jungle. Blessed with gills that allow them to breathe underwater, Argonians are just as graceful beneath the murky depths as they are weaving through the trees, using their webbed hands and feet to propel them through marshy lakes and rivers with the speed of a barracuda. Although bipedal and humanoid, Argonian biology is foundationally reptilian, giving birth not to live young but to clutches of eggs. This makes them fundamentally alien creatures to the races of elves and men, and even to other beast races like the mammalian Khajiit. Other races often describe how uncanny interactions with Argonians can be, citing their reserved nature, expressionless face, and strange body language as utterly unlike anything seen among the warm-blooded races of Tamriel. With that said, the Argonians are capable of adopting mannish and marish mannerisms and assimilating them into human and elven society. Indeed, outside of Black Marsh, the Argonians are fully integrated into the Tamrielic milieu, with diaspora communities found all over the continent. Unfortunately, these communities are often subject to intense discrimination. In human lands, even the most acculturated of Argonians are seen as aliens and made subject to exclusionary policies. In the city of Windhelm, the Argonians have been relegated to third-class citizens, made to work as impoverished dock laborers and kept outside the city walls so that the xenophobic Nords within might not have to look upon them. To the Dark Elves, the Argonians are naught but farm tools. For countless generations, Dunmer slave raids have plagued Black Marsh's northern border, carrying entire tribes worth of lizard folk northwards to Morrowind in chains. Having provided a broad overview of who the Argonians are, let us now explore their earliest origins. The roots of the Saxlil people are, quite literally, found at the base of their creators, the Hist. The Hist are one of, if not the single oldest, life forms on Tamriel, older than every species, older than every civilization that has ever risen and fallen, and older than the Aetra and Daedra themselves. To say that the Hist are a race of ancient sapient trees 
is a little like saying that the Khajiit are cats of above-average intelligence, a surface-level statement which, while technically true, barely touches upon the complexity beneath the surface. In the half-remembered Dawn Age, the time of formless, shapeless chaos before the settling of the Earthbones, the roots of the Hist already ran deep within the Earth. With gnarled tendrils burrowing deep beneath the black soil and soft white stone of Black Marsh and snaking out across the expanse of Nern, the Hist are omnipotent, eternal, and responsible for the creation of the Argonian race. It is for this reason that the Argonian endonym of Saxlil means people of the root. One Argonian, Mir Glim, described his people's connection to the Hist as such. They are many, and they are one, all attached at the root, and we too are joined at that root. Some say we were created by the Hist, to see for them the world where they cannot walk. They can call us or send us away. When we are named, we take the sap of the Hist, and we are changed, sometimes a little, sometimes very much. The Argonians maintain a deep spiritual connection with the Hist, which informs every single aspect of their society and daily lives. Often this manifests through the use of Hist sap, a magic substance which oozes from their trunk and roots. Argonian eggs are incubated in pools of this Hist sap to aid in their hatching. Upon reaching a certain age, Argonian hatchlings participate in a ceremony in which they lick the sap and are thus given a soul and a unique adult physical form. Indeed, much like the Khajiit, the Argonians are morphologically varied, with subspecies ranging from the hulking behemoths to the sleek and deadly naggers. Argonians are given their form by the Hist, and many petition the Hist to change their form throughout the course of their lives. Due to this, the Argonians see the body as an impermanent and ever-changing vessel. Even gender, known to the Saxlil as life phases, are fluid. The Argonians are capable of changing their sex if the Hist allows it, shifting between the intelligent, magically gifted female life phase and the strong, physically stalwart male life phase with ease. Argonians believe that life is cyclical and that when they die, their souls return to the Hist and will be reincarnated back into an egg to be incubated in the sap and begin the life cycle anew. The Argonian connection to an eternal hive mind of god trees has led the lizard folk to develop a uniquely non-linear understanding of time. Mere Glim the Argonian once mused that the concept the Imperials called time did not even have a word in his native language. In fact, the hardest part of learning the language of the Imperials was that they made their verbs different to indicate when something happened, as if the most important thing in the world was to establish a linear sequence of events. To his people, at least the most traditional ones, birth and death were the same moment. All of life, all of history, was one moment. It is important to note that despite being soul-bound to the Hist, the Argonians are not slaves, nor are they mindless drones. They are still individuals, capable of individual dreams and aspirations. Their relationship with the Hist is not one of pure servitude, but of mutual symbiosis, wherein the Forever Trees grant wisdom, soul and form to their reptilian children, in return for reverence and protection in kind. Moreover, Argonians do not need a connection to the Hist in order to survive. Saxlil, who migrate out of Black Marsh, eventually lose their ability to hear the Song of the Root, and those who were born outside of the swamps never hear it at all. In spite of this, these Argonians get on just fine without their ancestral connection to the Hist, living fully integrated lives throughout the Empire, in spite of the discrimination they often face at human and elven hands. Even the Argonians back in the marsh are a vibrantly diverse lot, their connection to the Hist in no way compromising their love for personal freedom and individual expression. Just like humans and elves might style their hair or paint their nails to attract a partner, so too do the Argonians have a myriad of cosmetic features they love to preen, decorating themselves with ornaments which emphasize their horns, wattle spikes and feathers, all of which are considered symbols of beauty among their people. Contrary to outside belief, the Saxlil don't spend all their time stalking the jungle or looking for hopelessly lost elves to devour. Indeed, they entertain themselves the same way everyone else does, through song and spectacle. Tibahatse, or hip and tail ball, is a popular and intensely competitive Argonian team sport, wherein the ball may not be touched by either the hands or feet, but only by hips, elbows and reptilian tails. 
The most popular Argonian instrument is the vossasatl, or frog pipe, a winding pipe instrument with live frogs kept inside it, designed to manipulate the croaking of said frogs into harmonious noises at the guidance of the musician. In the bedroom, Argonians are known to fill their pillows with live centipedes, enjoying the wriggling sensation as a kind of organic massage chair type thing. Politically, the Argonians are divided along tribal lines, each of which possess a distinct culture and physical morphology. The Agasefs, who reside in the deep inner jungles, are said to have needle-like faces, which vary in color from bright green to orange. The Nagakur of Merkmaya are among the most warlike of the Saxlil, and fashion the bones of their fallen enemies into weapons and armor. The Wasik Halil, or Bright Throat People, are known as the Bards of the Swamp, and are renowned for their rich music and dance tradition. In contrast, the Vishklil Zel, or Ghost People, are a feared pariah folk. Identifiable by their pale white scales, they are known to steal the dead of other tribes, and perform necromantic rituals on them. The Archines, meanwhile, are a wealthy but universally hated tribe known for their ties to House Dress, the most notorious slavers in Morrowind, and for making their fortune by selling other Argonians into slavery at Dunmahans. Unlike most races of men and myrrh, the Argonian religion does not revolve around a pantheon of Aedra and Daedra. Neither the Nine Divines of the Cyrodiilic Pantheon nor the machinations of the Daedric Princes have a place in the Foggy Fens. Naturally, most religious rituals in Black Marsh revolve around the veneration of the Hist, but not all. Since antiquity, Argonia has been a stronghold for the worship of the personification of chaos and change, a being known as the Serpent of Chaos, the Unmaker, the Bringer of Ends, or most famously, Sithis. Best known for being the patron of the Dark Brotherhood, Tamriel's most notorious order of assassins, Sithis is held in high regard by the Lizardfolk, who do not see him as an evil being. Sithis is considered by the Argonians to be the harbinger of Kuvaste, the needed change. After all, death is a form of change, and can be a beginning, a cycle turned again. The most devout Sithis worshippers in the marsh are the Shadow Scales, an ancient monastic order of Argonians born under the sign of the Shadow, trained from birth to be master assassins and bring about the sacred Kuvaste through the surgical taking of lives. The Shadow Scales have a long-standing partnership with the Dark Brotherhood, and are feared not just in Black Marsh, but throughout all of Tamriel. Even if the Argonians don't possess a traditionally linear understanding of time, our audience certainly does, so let us now provide a brief overview of the history of the Sax Lille. The Argonians are one of the oldest people on Tamriel. Traditional Tamrielic historiography claims that beast races like the Argonians, Khajiit, and the long-extinct bird people of Cyrodiil are the original inhabitants of the continent, with men and myrrh being later arrivals. This is corroborated by surviving fragments from the Journal of Topal the Pilot, the first Altmer explorer to chart the waterways of the Tamrielic mainland, which make mention of a fetid evil swampland with its human lizards suggesting that the Argonians were already present in Black Marsh long before the rise of elven and human civilizations elsewhere on the continent. However, other sapient species had also made the swamp their home since time immemorial. These include the Lilmothet fox people, for whom the modern city of Lilmoth is named, and several ancient indigenous human tribes. One of these human tribes, the seafaring silver-skinned Kothringi, are especially interesting, for archaeological evidence suggests that their presence in Black Marsh long predates the arrival of the Nords from Atmora in the late Merethic era, or even the spread of the Nadic tribes throughout the continent before that. This would make the Kothringi one of, if not the, oldest human culture on Tamriel. Throughout the prehistoric Merethic era, while elven civilizations like the Aelides, the Dereni, and the Chima spread throughout the Tamrielic mainland, the Argonians kept to themselves in the swamps, maintaining a relationship with the Limothit, Kothringi, and other local tribes that was mostly peaceful, though punctuated with sporadic warfare. For the most part, the empires of the outside world left the lizard folk alone, their treacherous jungle homeland providing little incentive for colonization. This changed in the First Era, when the Barsabic Eilids, a splinter faction of the Eilid Empire, migrated into the marsh after fleeing religious persecution in their homeland of Cyrodiil. Meanwhile, another elven race, the Chima, began raiding from the north to capture Argonians as slave labor for their plantations. 
While the Barsay Bikelides would later fade from the pages of history, the Chima, who would later become the Dunmer Dark Elves of Morrowind, would remain a scourge on Argonia right up until the end of the Third Era, carrying thousands of Argonians back to their ashy homeland in chains, either through direct abduction or cooperation with native slaving tribes. In the early Second Era, the Argonians would experience human imperialism for the first time, when Reman Cyrodiil's Second Empire of Man came to town, engaging in a brutal war of conquest that saw his regions annex the borderlands of Argonia, without being able to make headway into the deadly interior. Before long, Saxlil bitterness over their exploitation at foreign hands was simmering hot, and in Second Era 560, reached a boiling point. That year, a deadly plague, known as the Nahattan Flu, spread across Tamriel like wildfire. One of the deadliest pandemics, with a near 100% mortality rate for those infected, the Nahattan Flu turned villages into ghost towns and cities into mass tombs. To this day, there are two theories as to the origins of this Crimson Plague. One benignly claims it was simply natural causes, while the other purports that it was the Argonians, who, in partnership with the Hist, deliberately bioengineered the disease in retaliation against the enslavement and exploitation of their people. Given that the Argonians were the only species on Tamriel immune to the Nahattan flu, it hardly needs to be said which of these theories most people believe. The devastation left in this plague's wake allowed the Argonians to break free of the Second Empire's control. It also left Black Marsh a far emptier place, for practically all of the swamp's non-Argonian native species, such as the Kothringi and Lil Mothit, had been driven to extinction by it. Human imperialism returned to Black Marsh in the Third Era, in the form of Tiber Septim's Third Empire. But like their Remanite predecessors, the Septim dynasty only conquered the borderlands and coasts of Argonia, not daring to tread deeper into the swamps. Social memory of the Nahattan flu was strong, and the Imperials were terrified of the diseases and hostile reptiles who awaited them in those bogs and fetid bowels. When Marunes Dagon attempted to invade Tamriel during the Oblivion Crisis in Third Era 433, the histories foresaw his coming. The Argonians were altered by the Hist in order to combat the Daedra, becoming faster, stronger, and able to endure harsher punishment. When the Oblivion Gates were opened in Black Marsh, the Lizardfolk charged into them so viciously that the Daedra themselves were forced to close them in order to avoid being overrun. Because of this, the Argonians emerged from the Oblivion Crisis more united and stronger than ever before compared to the other Tamrielic races, who were devastated by Dagon's plot. In many ways, the opening decades of the Fourth Era was the Age of Argonia. Following the extinction of the Septim dynasty, the Argonians declared their independence from the Empire. Then, after the eruption of Red Mountain devastated Morrowind, the Argonians, still riding high from their triumph over the Daedric Hordes, launched a massive invasion into the land of the Dunmer in revenge for the millennia of enslavement they had suffered at Dark Elven hands. Large swathes of southern Morrowind were annexed by the Lizardfolk, and remain in their hands to this day. In 4th Era 48, the Argonian ascension was brought down to earth when the history of Lilmoth broke free of the network and went rogue, summoning the floating city of Umbriel onto the mortal realm of Mundus. As Umbriel soared above Black Marsh's skies, its ethereal tendrils stole the souls of countless Argonians below to feed the ingenium which kept the city afloat, turning their empty bodies into soldiers in its undead army. Umbriel carved a bloody swath of chaos and destruction through Black Marsh and into Cyrodiil, before it was brought down through the heroic efforts of Crown Prince Atropus Mead and his companions, the Dunmer Sul, the Breton Anaig, and the Argonian Mir Glim. Saxlil history has remained largely quiet for the rest of the current era. For now it seems that as long as the Argonians remain unbothered in their native swamplands, so too will they refrain from bothering anyone else. However, it would be unwise to consider the Argonians as mere peripheral players in Tamriel's future. For one thing, their recently conquered territory in southern Morrowind remains contested, so conflict with the Dunmer remains a near certainty. More generally, the Hist sees all, the Hist knows all, and the Hist has a plan for its reptilian children. Who knows what that plan might be? This series will continue with videos on all of Tamriel's playable races. To ensure you don't miss that, make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely, and don't forget to comment, 
We'll try to read and respond to every comment, as we want to know what you think about this video and what videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.